How's it going guys, I'm Vivi and welcome back to another ukulele analysis video. Today I am here with Evan Lin who's also a huge fan of the upcoming ukulele. Hey, thanks for having me on here Vivi. I'm Evan Lin and like Vivi, I've also worked on some ukulele analysis videos on my channel. I'm also the newest owner of the ukulele wiki and the owner of the ukulele Facebook fan group. I actually went to TwitchCon 2016 and I recorded a whole bunch of ukulele footage. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but Vivi even analyzed my recorded footage back in early November. Anyways, I'm super excited to analyze this trailer with you, Vivi. No problem, dude. Well, the thing is, since we're both looking forward to this series, we both decided to analyze the trailer together. For those of you who are very familiar with this channel, are probably fed up of hearing my voice for more than 15 minutes. So we both decided to bring you guys something different. And about this new trailer, very recently, Playtonic Games revealed a brand new world called Capital Casino, a casino level basically, and it was very unexpected. They did hint towards it on their Twitter page, but a lot of people had a hard time guessing. Anyways, we hope that you guys enjoy this collab. With that being said, let's jump right into it. So to start off, the very first thing we notice is Capital B's voice. We've never heard his voice before, while well, gibberish to be more technical. And I was actually picturing him with this kind of gibberish. <laughs> Now the world itself looks very nice, marble floored, it was very unexpected like I said. I was expecting maybe like a swamp world, there was a lot of discussion going on about that. Maybe we'll see something like that soon, maybe at PAX? Who knows? Now on the left we notice a ladybird or a bee, whatever you want to call it. Now this one is wearing an outfit. These bees right here are also present in Tribal Stack Tropics, but in that world they're not wearing anything and it seems like some of the enemies will actually have outfits in some of the worlds, which is a pretty little cool detail we can notice. So, for the slot machine right here, there was a concept art that got revealed a while ago. They most likely redesigned this character. It's called the Bandit. And talking about outfits, this one also seems to have a cowboy-themed jacket on. Now on the left, there seems to be like this pyramid, this huge platform. I'm wondering if we can make our way up there on the left. Maybe there's a pagey on top. And notice, there's a bunch of bees guarding the platform. As for anything else we can notice in the scene right here, there's a slide in the back with a bunch of quills. There's a collectible on top of the fountain. We can barely see it now, but we see it from close up later on. There's a pachinko machine right there with capital B's picture in it. Now these tunnels, we will see Yuka and Lily inside it right afterwards. And of course there is going to be some obstacles in there. Now I don't know what's inside that room over there. There's probably some obstacles in there as well. We can't really tell. And we get the name of the world, capital Cashino. Here we can see spinning roulette wheels with spinning roulette balls acting as an obstacle that may likely hit the duel upon touch. Also, one thing we can notice on these spinning platforms, there's some honey tokens, which are exclusive to this level. Now, what's the point of collecting these tokens? Well, it'll be explained later on in the video. Now, one thing I absolutely love about this level are the arcade machines. I mean, look at this one, it's a huge slot machine. Once you pull the trigger down, the images start spinning. Once everything matches, we get something, I'm assuming, right? It could be anything, a ghost rider stuck in there, a bunch of quills, maybe a pagey. As for the pictures, we have fruits, the duke from Tribal Stack Tropics, capital B with a mustache, I'm assuming, the bandit, and ukulele, of course. Once we pull the trigger, we have to buddy slam or ground smash on the switches to stop the spinning, right? We don't really see the player activating the switches but I'm simply assuming it does look like it. Notice on the trigger guys there seems to be this Yuka icon. It pretty much indicates that Yuka can use his tongue to pull on objects or pull on triggers. There's some blue lights right in front of the pachinko machine. Those indicate that Yuka can use his tongue to activate something. The machine perhaps. Now remember guys Yuka can also use his tongue to shoot a bunch of splash berries, flame berries and frost berries. He can also use his tongue to camouflage. Here Yuka and Lily are on a giant golf course that contains a giant golf ball and some red dye. There's a new ability that we can see here where the duo are using the reptile roll and then they charge in place and then dash forward. This ability can be used for speeding up, breaking objects or knocking objects back. For now there's no confirmed name for this ability so we'll temporarily be calling it the charge roll. Near the bottom left we can see Vendi the vending machine. If you look further down at the very beginning of the scene we can see what appears to be some kind of bridge or a card with a question mark on it. On the next part, Yuka and Lily are attacking the Casino Corplets and a Corplet Punisher with the Tail Twirl. It appears when we first see the Corplet Punishers, they will be resting. However, when attacked, the Corplet Punishers will get up, become enraged, and then charge its attack for exactly one second, and then start spinning quickly towards the duel. We've seen this attack in the E3 trailer, but in that trailer, they weren't glowing orange. We're wondering if this is some kind of buff for the Corplet Punisher. 
Not only that, but the Corgly Punisher seems to travel faster while spinning compared to the one in the E3 trailer. Is it because of the orange buff, or is it just updated AI behavior? We'll see in time. One very important detail we noticed in this scene, there's a time limit. We're rolling a ball, right? So could it be possible that we have to roll that ball to an area, of the course, in a limited amount of time? Maybe on a switch? But who knows. So as Evan mentioned, we reach a giant golf course. In one section of the course, we notice Bandit, or not. Notice one thing. In the beginning, this slot machine had different clothes on. Are they playing dress up? Is the Bandit playing hide and seek? He does look sad, again. Maybe we could exchange a bunch of honey tokens for like Quills or a Pagey? But very recently, it was confirmed by Platonic that the honey tokens have another purpose. It'll be explained later on, alright? Plus, you can find the explanation on the website. If you you guys didn't know. There's an out of order machine. We can spot many of these throughout the level, so maybe they have some sort of purpose. There's an arrow pointing towards something, maybe another room. In the beginning, we do notice the arrow, but we still don't see what's next to it. But we do seem to notice some fumes. Will that make us float to the top? What do you guys think? But how are we gonna float to the top? By simply going over it, right? Let's not complicate things. Now the switch right here looks giant, right? Are we supposed to roll the golf ball over it maybe? I talked about a switch, right? That whole thing about the time limit. Usually we ground smash or buddy slam on switches, so maybe this switch right here activates differently. Okay, before we move on, ground smash was from the toy box version. In all of these new gameplays, it's called the buddy slam. Just wanted to point that out. Next, we see Yuka and Laylee sliding down a golden slide. The first thing that we can spot here is Trouser. In fact, there's even a flashing arrow pointing to him. We're wondering what kinds of abilities that we can purchase in this world. One guess is that we could purchase the charge roll, since it seems to be used a lot in this world. We can see two entrances here. One is a cylinder one, and one's a huge giant door. However, if you look at the golden giant door, you can see some kind of blue light. We'll come back and talk about this blue light later. On the very last frame of this scene, we can see more of the level. Right across from us, there appears to be the Cardos Mine Tracks and another golden slide. Now, let's move on to the- wait, wait, wait. Do you see that? That looks like some kind of arcade machine. No, wait, that's some kind of booth with capital B in it? Or at least that looks like him. There's two options here. This appears to be either capital B himself or someone who looks just like him. If we go back a bit, do you remember that slot machine we saw earlier? There's an icon of capital B except with a mustache and some sunglasses. So in theory, the B with the mustache and sunglasses could be the one sitting in this booth. Or another possibility is that there could actually be many NPCs that look just like capital B. For now, this is just speculation, but there is one thing we're almost completely sure of, that this character acts as the banker. According to the Platonic Games news update, the banker will allow us to trade in casino tokens and exchange them for pages. Next, we see the duel being shot up from the fountain, like if it were some kind of cannon. Take note that in the very beginning, we can see the duel's air meter on the left, so this can allow us to presume that the duel somehow enters the cannon by swimming into the fountain and then into the top. On their way up, they collect 4 quills and 3 casino tokens, but it seems like they've missed 8 more quills on the side. If you look closely, there's a health extender at the very top. This is actually the very first time we've seen the health extender live in the game, before we've only seen its icon in the menus. On the top left, we can see another out of order slot machine, as well as a red slot machine. Notice that the giant barrels also have roulette wheels on them, however, they do not seem to be active. On the bottom right, that appears to be a sad casino machine, but it's hard to tell from this far away. Lastly, there's something about these red pipes that are seen around the level. Notice how this red pipe goes into this glass room? It seems like the duel can jump into the red pipes and it will be used as some kind of transportation system around the level. We got a bunch of new enemies. We saw these guys before, but we see them up close this time. If I describe them quick quick, it looks like they're made out of a box of cards with poker tokens as arms. There's a slide, a tunnel in the back. That's what we came out of to reach this place, I'm assuming. As for these invisible boxes, Usually, when it comes to invisible things, Laylee has to use her sonar ability to make them appear, right? But why are they invisible here? And why isn't the player using the sonar ability, right? Anyways, by charge rolling through the box as well, that's what we're calling the ability for now. Could there be some sort of explosive on top that's going to create an opening on the floor? Again, the sonar ability not only makes stuff appear, but it also makes stuff rotate. In this case, we have to activate these red squares to activate the cylinders, but we have to be careful not to be too slow, or else else will simply fall down. Right now, Yuka and Laylee literally crash the party by breaking through the glass with the charge roll ability. 
They then attack the Casino Corplets with a Tail Twirl. Like any other Corplet-like enemy, there seems to be a stronger version of them. Other stronger Corplets have pants, oil pans, and fedoras on their heads. These Casino Corplets seem to have a similar situation, where they're wearing some kind of hat that shows that they're stronger Corplets. Just a reminder, the stronger Corplets have two health instead of one. Here, we see a new spinning ability. This was seen in the Character Parade trailer, but some of us thought this was some kind of cutscene or idle animation. But if we look at the power meter, this seems not to be the case. Every time that the duel makes one full spinning rotation, they make a swoosh sound. Every time that sound appears, it seems that they recharge about 25% of their energy. When the duel are out of power, they can use this ability to recharge it. Be aware that this is not the main way to recharge the power meter. The main way to recharge the power meter is by simply not using any abilities and waiting for the meter to naturally recharge or by simply collecting butterflies. This new ability is just another way of charging up the power meter. We're also wondering if this ability can damage enemies when they get close. For now, we'll be calling this ability the power swing ability. And now we move on to Yuka's camouflage ability. We have to hide from the red beam until those white switches activate. Now one thing I've noticed about Capital Cashino compared to Tribal Stack Tropics is that this world is like this huge room with a bunch of obstacles and everything put close together. I mean look at the cylinders we noticed on the right. We do see them in the beginning. So yeah, it seems like everything is close together. Once both switches activate, the door opens and we notice a bunch of coffins, the ones from Tribal Stack Tropics, in which we can find pages. This time we have honey tokens in there. So the challenge in this world is to basically find all the tokens to give to the banker for a pagey, right? As mentioned by Evan. Now we gotta be careful, the door shuts down, so we gotta be quick. Next, the door are using the charge rule to jump over the electricity from the multicolored wires. It seems that this is a time section, as the player uses the charge rule and barely makes it through the door. It seems that though if the player had used the normal reptile rule instead, they would have not made it through. Notice the player charges the charge rule on the green light pad. As soon as the player is off of it, the pad turns red, which seems to start the timer for closing the door. Now we're inside a new room. We have a bunch of robots called Inept, judging by the toy box version. I mean, that's what the robot was called in that demo. I think once we're caught by their beam, they shoot a laser. We actually have to use that to our advantage. We have to use their laser to break the boxes we noticed right here. Now, once one of the boxes break, we notice a health butterfly very slightly. But think again, it's probably not a health butterfly, which extends our health, basically. It's not even shiny. The one we saw before was a health extender. About those shiny butterflies, there are seven in each world. Like Evan mentioned, I did go over his TwitchCon demo and I did talk about these numbers. Number of pages, number of butterflies in each world, but maybe that changed due to the fact that there's actually going to be 30 pages in each world. In his demo analysis, I thought there will be 25. If you guys watch that video, you'll understand. So for the butterfly in this box, it either fills up our power meter or health. It does not extend it. To simply recharge our health, we eat it. By collecting it, we refill our power meter. A door shuts down. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. We have to make our way there in time. The obstacles in this case are the inips. Now about these blue lights guys, it seems like they're coming from the cameras. We did see a blue light before, so I'm assuming that's also a camera. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but if you get caught in the blue light, it seems like the door shuts down. And I think the same applies for that large door we saw before. Assuming it's a door of course. Here's another one, inept. It seems like they're guarding something like the boxes. I know there's a butterfly in there, but when the boxes break, we just see a normal yellow floor. So we can't really tell. In the last scene, the duel bounced on top of the three ladybird members to collect multiple gems during the Cardo's minigame. In the process, they also collect a golden gem, which seems to convert into five normal gems. Next to the golden box in the background, we can spot another out of order slot machine. And even further back next to the pillar, we can see another out of order slot machine. On the next scene, we can see quite a bit here. At the very beginning of the scene, on the very bottom right, we can see a slot machine and a pachinko machine from before. On the bottom left, we can see a jellyfish swimming inside of the fountain. He was also seen during the Gamescom trailer. On the right side, there are four card suits, like the diamonds that Laylee used the sonar shot on earlier. Perhaps if the duel stands on this platform and Laylee uses the sonar shot on all four card suits, the platform will go up. At the very end of the scene, on the top left, we can see one more sad slot machine. The very last scene features what capital B calls the head of security. This is likely just the nickname for the enemy and not the actual name. This is likely the boss of capital Casino and will likely be fought while riding on Cardos. But how will we fight him? 
Remember that during the Gamescom trailer, it was revealed that Kardos can actually shoot out cannonballs, so perhaps the duel can either shoot out cannonballs at the boss or jump on top of the boss. Keep in mind that this is just speculation, and we aren't even completely sure if this is even the boss of the level. One last thing, the head of security's design is very similar to Inept's design. Inept is a security robot, and the boss is the head of security, so it makes sense if they are connected in some kind of way. Anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that part of the video. Now we move on to the Kickstarter Dev Focus, which focuses on Tribal Stack Tropics. They've changed a few things, not a lot, but we will go over them as well. So in this scene we have Clara, the skeleton girl. We don't see a difference, but we get a pagey by defeating the enemies called the Corplets. And there's a butterfly right there, we eat it to gain health or collect it to fill up our power meter, like I explained before. Now Shovel Knight will appear in Tribal Stack Tropics. This was very unexpected, and his gibberish is the most funniest thing I've ever heard. Yo, oh ho, oh ho, ho, ho. Yo, oh ho. Here's the Tribal Stack corporate. Like the Snow Minions in Glitter Glaze Glacier, or the Casino Minions in Capital Casino, this is the Tribal Stack Tropics variation of the corporates. Despite looking different, it likely has the same exact stats and behavior though. So nothing much in this scene guys, we have a nice view of Tribal Stack Tropics, there's a bunch of challenges. Now the challenge I can think of for this location right here is the one which we have to go through the rings. Now the ring is not shown, and usually the platform in the front is invisible, so I'm guessing they're just showcasing the world. Once we go through the ring, which isn't present, the platform appears. In the very next scene, this is our first time we get our first close-up look at Vendi. Her location as of late has been kind of confusing. She is originally in front of the Duke's temple, and then she moved to the second floor of the Tribal Stack Monument. However, a very new screenshot was provided by Platonic Games' website showing that Vendi is back in her old spawn, in front of the Duke's temple. In the next scene, this is our first interaction with Rextro. On the top of the arcade machine reads, Rextro's Software Entertainment. Next, we have a new look at Nimble. NIMBL Nimble is the niece of NIMBO Nimble, the cloud on top of the mountain. Right now, she has a new model and she's not pink anymore, and she's even smaller than Yuka. Just a reminder, Nimble will challenge Yuka and Lily to a race. From what multiple sources have told us, there are three types of races. The first race will take place on a dry riverbed, and the other two races will take place on a water-filled riverbed and a frozen riverbed. Remember, the riverbed can be controlled by the other Big Nimble on the mountain. The player can go to Big Nimble to change the river from dry, to wet, and to frozen. And this will change the type of race you will challenge Small Nimble to. Also, if you look very closely on the side of Nimble's helmet, it reads 64, which is supposed to reference the Nintendo 64. Huh, nice touch. Alright, now we move on to something brand new we haven't seen before. Well, it's not brand new, it's technically in the game, but I'm just saying that we haven't seen it yet. Buying abilities from Trouser. We see this for the very first time. So the abilities in Tribal Stack Tropics cost 30 quills. Now Trouser is found in many spots, but that doesn't mean that he will teach us three abilities every time. I think that would be too much. So I'm assuming there's going to be three abilities in each world. Maybe less, or maybe more. And if I remember correctly, during EGX 2016, Andy Robinson explained that every first ability in each level will be free. Oh wait, there's an example I can think of. Travel Stack Tropics right in the beginning. Trouser tells us how to lizard roll, so I think that's what Andy Robinson was talking about. With that being said, for the abilities we have Sonar Shot, lately Sonar Ability pretty much, Slurp Shot, which allows us to eat butterflies, camouflage, and shoot a bunch of berries. We can also use the tongue to activate triggers. Buddy Slam, also known as Ground Smash originally, while well, in the toy box version I mean, it activates switches, and if you guys have noticed, they're playing on the Xbox One. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to point out guys, it has to do with Yuka's tongue. Remember when I talked about those icons, those objects which indicate that Yuka can use his tongue? In the game's con trailer, we did have something like that, which allowed Yuka to make his way up to another platform, but they actually changed the block looking thing. Or maybe I'm simply mistaken, those blocks might be different in each world. But maybe not. Next is the boss that we currently call Rampo. Rampo is technically the unofficial name here, but it would make sense due to all of the ramps. His name was revealed through Sir Scoffs a lot, stating that the group was looking for Rampo's sacred treasure. Anyways, the temporary name for this place is called Rampo's Castle. From my experience at TwitchCon on the ground level floor, the tribal stack canals actually run through the castle. In that canal passageway, there is a tiny hidden entrance that actually leads to Rampo's sacred treasure. And according to the character parade trailer, Lady Leap a lot is located there. Anyways, according to the Gamescom trailer, it seems like this boss focuses on the duel using the reptile roll fast and accurately. 
We're guessing in order to defeat Rampel, we must use the reptile roll and go into him, which probably triggers something and he gets hurt somehow. And now we're back to another nice view of Tribal Stack Tropics. Many of these areas we've visited in gameplays, we've seen a bunch of gameplay of Tribal Stack Tropics. There's a red ghost rider, this one attacks. Nimble the Cloud, as explained by Evan. We can feed it by giving it splash berries, frost berries, or flame berries. Splash berries creates rain, frost creates snow, and flame pretty much turns snow into water. Rain. There's some flame berries right there. When shooting the berries, the new aiming icon has actually changed. Before we had this plus sign. And I'm absolutely loving the art in the back. There's one thing in my mind, guys. It's crazy how the level changed. Remember the very basic level? The play tokens were supposed to be the quills. It was very empty and time flies. Here, we see the spewers. The name Spewer is just an unofficial name though. In the TwitchCon demo, there is a spear and NPC named Mr. Blowy, but we don't know if that name applies to all of them, so for now, we'll just refer to them all as spears. Overall, the spears got a rework, and now there are two types of spears, the fire ones and the wind slash water ones. Before this scene started, Yuka used the copy ability on a cannonball in order to turn metal. The metal property helps Yuka walk through harsh winds. At the end of this footage, we see a pagey here. We're not sure if this is going to be in the full game, but at least during the convention demo, the player is rewarded with a pagey just by getting to that spot. Blastui the cannon. We shoot cannons in that four-headed spewer to get a pagey. There's a coffin right there. Blasto is actually his brother, and we see him in Shipwreck Creek. As for the spewers, they changed the design, as mentioned by Evan. On top of Tribal Stack, there's a power extender, and there's going to be one in each world, I'm assuming. After analyzing Evan's demo game, play at TwitchCon. So with that being said guys, I will let Evan finish off the analysis. In the very last scene, Yuka and Lele are jumping into a pool of water. This takes place below Nimble's mountain as you can see the shortcut entrance to the right. We can hear the water channel fade here as well and oh my gosh, Grand Kirkhope's music is amazing. Like in the Banjo-Kazooie games, when jumping into the water, the instruments will all be changed to harp, so it sounds like the player's speakers are submerged. It seems like the button has to be used with the Buddy Slam ability, which of course is the official name of the Grand Pound ability. However, it seems that it has to be used with the Fart Bubble. The main problem is that the Wind Spear will get in the way. The only way we know how to hit this button is by using the Copy ability to turn into Metal, then jumping into the water and then activating the Fart Bubble ability, and then Buddy Slamming the button. Not only that, but we don't even know what this button does in the first place. Also, I've checked this. The pond doesn't dry up when we use the Flame Berry on Nimble. So in short, we really just don't know how to activate the switch. And with that being said guys, this is it for the analysis part. Oh, and before I move on, Evan has something to say. Hey, make sure you check out my channel if you're interested in some of my old ukulele stuff. Or you can check out my newest channel called The Hyvery Hub, where I'm working together with others to get out the best ukulele content there is. And all my future ukulele videos will also be going on to that channel. We don't have much on there as of right now, but be sure to subscribe to the Hyvery Hub for some great upcoming videos on ukulele. Again, thank you so much for having me on here, Vivi, and thank you to everyone else for watching this analysis collaboration video of the newest ukulele footage. You heard the dude, maybe you'd like to check those channels out, the links will be in the description below. And thank you again, Evan, for taking the time to work on this video with me, it was pretty fun. So guys, we hope that you enjoyed this brand new style of analysis. One last thing I want to mention guys, on the next issue of the official PlayStation Magazine, in January there is going to be a free ukulele soundtrack that will come with it. Now this applies to subscribers and non-subscribers as well, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now some of you might wonder, is this a full soundtrack CD we're talking about? No, Grant Kirkhope actually confirmed this like yesterday. Oh and by the way, thanks user Flower on Twitter for sending me these pictures. Now some of you might ask, what's subscribe page 98. Well, if you're a subscriber, you receive extra gifts and an exclusive cover, apparently. Even if we're not talking about a full soundtrack CD, this is pretty cool. What do you guys think? But anyways, I'm gonna end the video right here, guys. If you have any thoughts or anything like that, as usual, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Vivi, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys next time.